Did you know that there's $434 trillion that exists in private wealth in the world? Did you know that 1.2% of the people in the world control roughly half of that wealth, 47.8% of the wealth of that $434 trillion? Before you answer that question, let me give you another question. Did you know that the bottom 52% of all the people in the world, of the 8 billion people in the world, are fighting over 1.2% of this $434 trillion in private dollars. Well, if you didn't know that, now you do. My question to you is, does it concern you? And you may say, well, that's how it should go. The people that work hard and invest their money, take risk, should enjoy the rewards. In other words, you might say that that's equitable. Well, that raises another question. Do you think that they got this money by equitable means? That a small percentage, 1.2% of the people in the world, obtained this inordinate amount of wealth through fair and just and equitable means without the assistance and without exploiting, without taking advantage of, and in some cases, enslaving the rest of the people. If you think that, then friends, you're living in a fantasy world. Let me tell you something about this 1.2% of the people that, that control roughly half of the wealth in the world. They live primarily in North America, many in the United States, some in Canada, but others live in Europe. We're talking about Great Britain, some in France, and some in other countries. But what you should know is that these countries where this wealth, this high percentage of the wealth is concentrated in the world, are the very same countries that either participated in the Atlantic slave trade and or the colonization of Africa and Asia. So here's my last question and my last thought. Should people, corporations, families that have acquired wealth through immoral, unjust, exploitative and thuggish means be allowed to retain the benefit. Let me give you something to think about. One of the things, if you've been tuning in and you've been listening to me raise these different questions, one thing that I've not shared with you is that I am a minister of the gospel and that to some extent I've been subjecting you to a biblical conversation about what is morally right and what we should do to make the world better for all people. And in the Bible, there's this concept of restitution. In today's talk, in today's speak, we speak of it in terms of reparations. But essentially, it means this, that if you commit a wrong, an economic wrong, if you injure your fellow human being and you benefit from that, and there comes a time that you say that you want to make it right, part of making it right means that you must bring forth tangible and this is what John the Baptist said to uh, the people who came to, quote unquote, repent. He said, bring forth fruits of repentance. You see, this, this wealth, this disproportionate amount of wealth that we're talking about, how it's distributed. Let me give you another aspect of that. The bottom 52% of the people in the world. So the overwhelming majority or the majority of the people in the world are fighting for 1.2% of this $434 trillion. Another way of, of saying that is that the majority of the people are fighting over crumbs. Now we know that when you have, at any point in time, in any place in the world, a small percentage owning the majority of the wealth and the assets and the majority fighting over crumbs, that that creates tension, false tension between the majority. To put that in, in, in visual terms, and, and economists have, in fact, reduced this, this distribution of the wealth, this unfair distribution of the wealth in the world, and, and put it in the form of charts. And what you see is that there are certain people who live on these artificial mountains of wealth in the world, well and way above the reach and the access of everyone else. And conversely, there are people that live in these deep, dark, economic valleys beneath those who live on the
the mountain of wealth. I'd like to share with you a concept that comes from the biblical book of Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah says that every mountain will be brought low and every valley will be exalted. And what was implied in that is that there are some people who are living and existing on these artificially created mountains. And those mountains were built at the expense of the people who live in the valley. The people who live on the mountain are the ones that get all of the perks in life. But they also are able to control the policies, the laws. They're able to control how the laws are enforced in terms of law enforcement structures. And they're able to put forth a narrative that makes the people who are suffering in the valley, that 52% that, that we talked about, they're able to put forth these strategic narratives that cause the people who live in the valley to be at odds with each other. How does that look? Well, it's black against white. It's brown uh, against uh, red. It's Asians against Europeans, it's Europeans against Asians. You know, there are all kinds of people who live in the valley because as I've told you in terms of the statistics that I've shared with you, the vast majority of human beings live in this artificially created valley. So really, when I ask the question, uh, is it fair? Should they, those that have exploited others, those that have enslaved others, those that historically have colonized others and have amassed wealth and kept that wealth, protected that wealth, and grew that wealth, is it fair that they should retain it? If it's not, then what should we do? What should we do to equalize things, to, to bring in a greater degree of equity? You know that equity is God's requirement. It's not man's requirement. That when someone becomes uh, wealthy through ill-gotten uh, gain and through immoral practices, that there is a divine requirement that that person or those people or that group be divested of or disgorged of their ill-gotten gains because every mountain will be lowered and every valley will be elevated. And we see this pattern throughout human history, people accumulating wealth at the expense of others and telling uh, those who live in this artificial valley that you shouldn't object or you shouldn't oppose because if you play your cards right, you can also live on the mountain of exploitation. Should reparations occur, should restitution occur, should disgorgement occur, whatever you want to call it, it is a divine mandate and it is a divine requirement. It is not a human option. It will happen, not because one group of people decide that they're going to do something about it, but because it is God's way and it is God's will. Now that's what I think. Tell me what you think.